NASA already believes in SpaceX's ability to land its astronauts on the lunar surface successfully. They buy all of Elon's ideas about the giant Starship and its engineering concept as a reliable transport system to explore space. Hence, SpaceX and Elon Musk were awarded the $2.9 billion lunar lander contract. Even if NASA's aim for the SLS was to enable astronauts to begin their mission of exploring areas far beyond the solar system, perhaps NASA's engineers believe that everything about the SLS rocket has not been put in place place to make their ambition a reality. Therefore, NASA eventually chose to use SpaceX's Starship as their savior to achieve their moon goals. Stick around in today's video as we reveal why NASA finally thinks that SpaceX Starship is better than their own SLS rocket. NASA has been working on rockets to transport their astronauts to the moon for the first time since 1970s. They created history when Apollo 11 sent humans to the moon. It wants to do the same in 2025 through Artemis 3 by bringing the first woman and person of color to the moon. NASA is returning to the moon and it has the SLS rocket to do so. Meanwhile, Elon Musk and SpaceX are working hard on their massive Starship rocket intended to transport humans to Mars one day. So how do the two differ? NASA will employ a massive rocket known as the Space Launch System SLS, a supreme rocket NASA will use to demonstrate that they can do a lot in space rather than paying just SpaceX to transport their astronaut to the moon. Years of development and billions of dollars put into their investment, both rockets stand on their launch pads, ready to take off on their first flights, maybe within the next few months. Since early February, the Starship rocket has been on a launch pad at SpaceX's Texas test site. Elon Musk stated on March 21st that the company's first orbital mission is scheduled to fly in May, assuming that the rocket's engines are built and mounted on time. Whereas NASA's Space Launch System SLS unveiled last week at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida aims for a similar launch window. While NASA's SLS was planned from the start with the moon in mind, Starship was designed like a rocket to conquer Mars. If a rocket is powerful enough to deliver the payload required for a crewed flight to Mars, it is certainly capable of transporting astronauts to neighboring planets like the moon. In fact, at first, the primary objectives of Starship will be lunar surface and Earth orbiting missions. Of course, the SLS and Starship have comparable payload capacities to low Earth orbits, but that's where the similarities end. The Starship outperforms the SLS due to orbital refueling in raw capability. Consider the SLS's capabilities in its design function as a lunar supply vehicle for the Artemis missions. In Block 1, the SLS can send 26 tons to the lunar surface, compare that to a Starship which can deliver 100 tons to the moon's surface. Each SLS mission will necessitate the construction of a completely new rocket. The Starship is planned to be completely reusable with nothing thrown away between missions. Because once the SLS is flown into space, it'll be gone, destroyed and forever lost. If NASA requires another flight, they have to create a new rocket for each flight. This is how it used to be before the space shuttle. The complete rocket will be wasted on every flight. The SLS is based on 1980s technology and is best described as a space shuttle, a cool space plane that flew back to Earth each time. The Starship is a novel concept that employs revolutionary Raptor engines that have never been flown before. Nobody could build one until now, though the Russians came close and the concept of orbital refueling essentially reset the rocket equation at lower Earth orbit, giving the Starship its incredible capabilities. This solution got us to the moon, provided you don't mind the exorbitant cost, but it's not a long-term solution for any form of long-term endeavor. This takes us to the pricing gap between the two systems. The difference is just massive in this case. Each SLS launch will cost more than $1 billion, almost $2 billion initially, then reducing to under $1 billion after multiple flights, leading to an extremely high payload price. On the other hand, a Starship is estimated to cost one-tenth of that, with the price stripped down as the Boca Chica production facilities become more established, and the greatest part is that the entire system will be reused. Now the launch cost is only $2 million, including fuel and ground services, which is 100 times less than the cost of an SLS for four times the payload. Because both stages of Starship will be recoverable and reusable, Starship with its super heavy heavy first stage should be able to deliver equivalent payloads to orbit for around 2% of the cost of an SLS launch. The SLS will cost around $2 billion every launch and will be completely disposable with Boeing lucky to be able to produce one per year if everything works as planned. The Starship should only require a $1 million refueling and should be able to launch within days after a prior launch. 
Elon intends to launch a single super heavy launcher three times each day. SLS can send roughly 100 tons into orbit for $2 billion per year, but a cheaper reusable Starship fleet, a few super heavy rockets and a few more Starships could put more than 10,000 tons into orbit. For some reasons, the SLS rocket was imposed on NASA. They didn't initially want to design the SLS. Congress, which refused to fund anything else, compelled NASA to build the SLS and create the SLS rocket as an avenue for a job preservation program. The orbital capacity data made public on the NASA and SpaceX websites are not completely similar. NASA, for instance, claims that SLS will be capable of launching 46 metric tons into deep space, and SpaceX also claims that Starship will be capable of launching more than 100 metric tons into low Earth orbit. And the deep space we're talking about here is everything beyond the Moon. The SLS is designed to go straight to its target only for the Moon landing. Still, Starship is designed to fly to Earth orbit, recharge through another the Starship and continue its mission, increasing its range and payload capabilities. If you look carefully at the SLS rocket boosters, they could be extremely dangerous for manned space travel. Still, members of Congress from the districts where these rockets are manufactured requested that NASA continue to utilize them to keep the plant running. The SLS engines fastened to the large orange tank's bottom are the same as those used on the shuttle. Congress is completely uninterested in relaunching America into space. Their major concern is bringing the money back home to keep the factories in their regions open. They instructed NASA to continue creating and utilizing these pieces from their districts to make the whole thing function. Of course, there have been various tweaks and revisions. However, Congress refused to step aside and enable NASA to develop and build their desired system. Obama removed NASA from the low Earth orbit market and directed the agency to purchase seats on rockets conceived and manufactured for profit by private industry. Engineers designed and built SpaceX to efficiently deliver people and cargo into space to generate a profit. It is not for Congress to save manufacturing and employment to purchase votes. That is the main distinction between the two programs. The Starship are built in a swarm of tents by construction workers, wielding equipment and cherry picker lifts. It's built of inexpensive steel sheet which is unrolled and welded in a single process and the Starship is powered by a Tesla vehicle battery pack and the 3D printers are used to create the Raptor engines. With SpaceX, the Starship simply lands on a basic concrete pad near the launch site, kicks the tires, uses a crane to load it onto the first stage onto the launch pad, fills it with methane and oxygen, and it's ready to fly again. The SLS manufacturing method is incredibly modern, gleaming, and extremely expensive. SpaceX is far more realistic in their approach. They can build the Starship in a tent-like vertical vessel and create a superior rocket compared to what the SLS looks like. The distinction between the NASA-funded Cost Plus project and a private organization is spending money from the boss's bank account. Elon Musk is standing firm to make SpaceX a renowned space company globally, where anything concerning space shuttle navigation can be operated. In what way do you think SpaceX's Super Heavy rocket is better than NASA's SLS rocket? You can also check out how Elon Musk just revealed how SpaceX's Starship will sustain life in this incredible journey to outer space. Just click on the video.